So this video, I'm just going to talk quickly about how you can use the convex muscle stem to be able to strengthen muscle and, and generally a rough guide protocol to sort of follow. So effectively, you want to be training for strength, so you can pick the strength uh, setting on there. You can even use hypertrophy, which also does target the fast twitch and the slow twitch fibers. So that's the thing, it will target all muscle fiber types. Now the key here is, is that you want to get it, get it running and get the contractions as high as you can get them. Um, obviously you, you'll get used to it and often you'll find that when you first run the first few contraction cycles, if you like, you'll, you'll find that the electrical sensation that you're feeling, which is usually the limiting factor at the beginning, should diminish. Which means that every three, four, five cycles, you want to try and increase it, basically. Now, the first way you go about it is that you, you'll find that on most of the complexes, you'll have at the beginning of, say, the strength setting, you'll have one, two, three. And they are basically the um, programs. And what it is, is they increase in length, they increase in frequency, which just gets more of the fast twitch. So they're just a bit more advanced. So the first thing I'd advise is start off on the first one. Now, depending on how deconditioned you are, is governed by what you do next. If you're really, really deconditioned in the muscle, then it might be that you don't even run the full program length on the first one. You might only do it for quarter or half of the program length. Um, but what you wanna do is to try and get it up as high as you can get it and get as good a contraction as you can. But the first thing you do is you do static contraction. And what this means is, Say you've got it on your quads, on your thigh muscle. You turn it up, turn it up, turn it up. You'll be sitting on the edge of the bed with your leg dangling down and you'll turn it up until you're literally only just able to stop it from moving. So you're, you're able to maintain 90 degrees at the knee. And once you hit that point, then don't go any higher than that. That'll be where you stick. Um, so then what you do is you let it run and you increase the program length until you're doing the full program length on number one. Um, the next thing to do is to run the program length uh, gradually on number two and then on number three. Now what you would do is, because this isn't eccentrically overloading, it's isometric contraction predominantly, you can actually get away with doing this every day, um, but you can also kind of go every other day, but certainly that's okay at this point. Um, the next phase then is you need to now start to do dynamic movements. So what you would do then again on the quads example is you do it exactly the same way with your leg dangling off the edge of the bed at nine degrees and you would increase and you'd go back to program level one and you would increase the contraction strength uh, very quickly because you know where you're at before. So you increase it really up. But then what you do is you work it out at the point where you can straighten nearly your knee, not quite fully locked and pull back down against it. And you wanna turn it up to a point where you can pull it back, um, but it's hard to pull back, all right? But you don't want it to the point where you can't pull it back. So that's where you would go to as a maximum. Now, the thing here is do not do a full program length at this point, because this is eccentric overload, which is a lot more taxing to the muscle. You get loads more muscle soreness if you do this. So what you should then do is you should literally run five cycle contractions. So your contraction intermittent, that's one. Contraction intermittent, that's two. You do five, literally five. Trust me, doing more, you will definitely be really sore. You'll get loads of delayed onset muscle soreness. So what you do is you do five cycles, right? And then stop. Now, because this is eccentric overloading, you don't wanna do this every day. You probably don't even want to do it every other day. You might need to have two days between sessions, depending on your soreness level as well. You'll know that by the next day, of course. Now, you'll get sore most likely, and then you'll train again. Now, depending on uh, how sore you were, uh, depends how quickly you're gonna be able to progress. But what I would always advise is stick with the same on the second one if you were sore with the first. So again, do five cycles of contraction on the level one setting, uh, obviously where you can just about pull it back and so on. Then you monitor again. A couple of days later, you train again. Now, if you had still some soreness, you would still stay on five cycles. If the soreness disappeared or minimalized to barely anything, then you would go to 10 cycles. And then you would wait again two days, you'd monitor your soreness. And if the soreness dissipates again, you increase to 15 cycles. If it didn't, you would stick at 10 cycles and go again. And this is what you keep doing. You keep increasing the number of cycles you do until you run in the full program month. 
Then what you can do is, you don't have to drop that down again, knock it up to level two, run the full program length, knock it up to level three, run the full program length. Obviously at this point, uh, you could then, beyond this, although this is very high level, is you could even start to do more loaded work. So rather than on the edge of the bed where you're just straightening and thing in the leg, you can start to do it with squats. Now this is where there's no direct exacting way to do it. You could play it safe and drop back to five cycles of contraction, monitor the soreness, and then 10 and monitor the soreness and so on. But it might be that that underplays it slightly. So you have to sort of have a little bit of poetic license with that as to how you go about that. Obviously, once you're foot running level three, full program length on squats, right? For starters, you're gonna be tired. That's a lot of squats. Um, but you can also start to think about adding some load to it, but you would do this very, very gradually, you know? So you're not going too crazy too soon. And because your body weight is heavier because of adding some weight, it will push you down in the squat. And obviously this would apply to other exercise and other muscles as well, but we're giving the example of, of the quads at the moment. Then you will literally add the load, which will increase the push down, which means you can actually increase the contraction strength a bit more as well. So the aim then would be to build up, um, you know, to full program length with the squat, with some weight. And really that's pretty much as high as you'd want to take it at this moment in time. Um, but if you get to that level, you are really pushing the boundaries. Uh, you know, you're really working hard. You'll be getting maximal levels of eccentric overload, maximum strengthening of tendon, muscle, and all the rest of it. So it's a very, very high level that that is to get to. But generally speaking, this is what you would do. And like I said, you can do this on any muscle. So if it's on the biceps, then you would literally think, well, the biceps, long head, for example, goes a full range of movements is into full elbow extension and uh, shoulder extension. So you'd be right the way behind yourself. And then you go all the way up into the shortened position. And that would be the eccentric overload uh, one where you're doing the dynamic. So with the bicep one, you just hold statically, and then you would increase until you're doing full program length on level three. Then you go on five cycles with this movement here and so on as we did with the quads. And then you can even add some load to that as well. So basically that is roughly a whistle stop tour of how you would generally go from day one using the muscle stem for strengthening all the way up to day whatever, you know? So that is pretty much what you would do. So hopefully that gives you a bit of uh, ideas about where to go with the muscle stem. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll see you next time in the next video.